All right, three, two, one. Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a high voltage capacitor bank using 10 450 volt capacitors, which could equate to 4,500 volts at 100 microfarads. I'm gonna be using hot glue to glue them all together, and then I'm just gonna use bus wire to connect them all together. Now, when hot gluing these in series, it's important to make sure you have the negative on this side, positive on this side going in, and then on the way back, you're snaking it back around to having the negative on this side, positive on the other side. So now that I have both of these hot glued together, now I'm just gonna combine them two with the, them snaking. So negatives on this side, positive on this side, positive on this side, negative on this side. So it's gonna snake this way. Now I'm gonna coat each terminal of solder first before I solder the wires on. So ideally in the capacitor bank, you wanna have a protection circuit between each one of these capacitors, but um, with these being the exact same and from the same manufacturer, I think they're going to be about the same capacitance for each one, so one is not going to be overcharged. I'm just going to test the voltage between each one of these terminals and see what's the drop between them, or if they're all the same. So the voltage between each one of these capacitors is inconsistent. Um, the highest one was, was 2.4 volts and the lowest was 2 volts. So it's about 0.4 volts difference between each one. I'm not going to charge these higher than what the capacitors are capable of. Um, 4,500, I'm probably gonna charge this to 4,300 just to be in the safe side. So here's my setup. I have the capacitor bank right there. I have my high voltage switch and the little thing to power it. And my 30 kilovolt power supply is gonna go right there. So my voltmeter actually has a high voltage probe that I created myself. It's basically just 10 two mega ohm resistors in series, which makes it uh, one and eleventh times the actual voltage. So whatever voltage is right there, you just pretty much multiply by eleven, and that gives you the actual voltage. All right, three, two, one. Yeah, I'm just messing with you. That's not actually what happened with this capacitor bank. This is what really happened. Lame. I know, right? So this capacitor bank did not crush the can. Still works, but uh, it's not what I expected. Let's go bigger. All right, I'm gonna stop right here. Now this one did a little bit more damage, but it didn't split in half. Now, since that last one was able to crush the can just a little bit, I want to see if this thing can actually make the can fly. So I'm just going to put the coil at the bottom of this and see what happens. Now for this one, I actually was able to charge it up to 2000 volts before the thing auto detonated. I don't know what happened with my switch. I'm guessing it was a little bit too close to the actual terminals and it just short circuited. But uh, it surprised the crap out of me and um, I'm going to bleep this out, but I kind of Screamed a little bit, and uh, I wish I had that on camera because my reaction was priceless. So after the thing went off, like I was looking down and uh, surprised the crap out of me. I stumbled backwards, ran to the wall, and <laughs> made the sound. So this one is charged to 3,700 volts. So after math, this thing completely, <laughs> that's why I have paper down there. Cause uh, I did that before and it kind of stained the back of my little board right there and I had to repaint it. And I still have 171 volts left in there. And this is what happens to the can. It's like a little ripple in there, but just pretty much all of that stuff just got on the pan.